the voices this morning and Felipe good morning as well whiteboard and the verse that we posted this morning do you have an access to the whiteboard yes so but before we start with this verse and discussing the painting if you wish do you have any questions or thoughts or impressions that you would like to share with us before we start is something on your mind that you would like to share I'm ready to follow you. Yes, yes. So. Felipe? Uh, actually, I would like to uh, to comment and uh, ask a question. Yes. Uh, it's because it, I, I am re uh, reading the Thomas Mann, you you have comment about uh, his profound studies on midrash and all kinds of uh, sources that uh, give him the authority to to you know to to write about it, and um, it's it's quite interesting because I've never. Uh, I've never uh, had contact with this uh, parallel uh, sources of, of blue tradition, you know, Midrash and also Talmud mm -hmm. and such. Uh, it's, it's just interesting it's because there is uh, so many details yeah. in the stories. And I was wondering if uh, you have much, much more culture about this. And I was wondering if all that he, he writes about, it's, it's found in these other sources, Hebrew sources. Yes, and I would like to uh, thank you for your question. It is touching the heart. And since you answer, asked this question, I, I was looking. Yes, he read a lot about the, the Midrashim, the Talmudic Midrashim and the other Hebrew sources that were available in his time to him. His wife Katya also testified and wrote in her memories, she wrote a book, that she said he did the best he can to have any access to any sources of the topics that he uh, was preparing to write. So he, he, he paid, I think also a lot of money, they were a well-off family and he did whatever he can to have an access to every literature he could get and learn thoroughly, very, very thoroughly the details. This is one aspect so he had the literature he as a personality he used to go to the depths of uh, the text that he used to read he also had a very uh, deep soul to um, speak as a complete picture that rose uh, from those laws midrashim legend and on top of this, in 1930, 1930, here I will write it on the board, he was visiting Egypt and, so to speak, Palestine. In those days, there was a British mandate here in the area, 1930. He, three years before Hitler came into power in Germany, three years before, he visited Egypt, he asked to visit Egypt, and 
Israel, Palestine with his wife. And he made a tour with his wife and they took a boat or they, uh, um, how do you say, sail along the Nile River. And in order that he would uh, have deep impression from the area of the Nile River, of the Delta, that he could reflect it in his writing. During their uh, voyage in Egypt in 1930, due to the hard conditions in those area, desert and lack of water and sanitation, his wife uh, got ill and she was hospitalized in uh, um, Egypt in a hospital and he continued to Palestine, to the land, to the promised land. And uh, he met with few people in Jerusalem and in Tel Aviv. And he himself also got uh, high fever, again, according to the conditions in the area. And they also <laughs> hospitalized together in, with fever in Jerusalem hospital, in a German uh, hospital. But he said that his uh, visit to Egypt and to the land of Israel helped him to bring, to embody the writing of the book. And he wrote the book of, for quite a long time, 15 years or so, took him to, to write the book. Does it answer your question? Yes, it, thank you so much. I didn't, I didn't uh, search about this, this uh, background of uh, his writing of his of this book, and uh, I, I I won't I won't take take uh, many time much time uh, in uh, questioning because there is a lot of a lot of uh, uh, topics that uh, you know pop up in the text and you you can ask you can ask about everything. So, that's okay, but uh, you know, um, yes, uh, I I wish to, and uh, but I was thinking about uh, earlier. I was thinking about what what would I ask first? <laughs> what were, what would be the first question about this 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 wonderful book? And um, but uh, there is uh, a topic that I've never uh, read uh, in, in the way he was uh, explaining. And I will try to explain uh, in English. It's, it's quite, quite deep, in, even in Portuguese, but uh, it's just uh, a concept mm -hmm. he brings. And I would like to uh, know if this concept is of his own of or it is uh, accepted and and even uh, mentioned in the, the sages uh, and so this is the the, the following uh, he starts uh, in in many many parts of the book he starts uh, a concept that uh, people uh, that have names as Jacob, as uh, Isaac, as Eliezer, mm -hmm. they wouldn't be necessary, necessarily the one one person, just one person. Uh, for instance, uh, he quotes about this Eliezer that. The first Eliezer would be his uh, servant, the son and servant of Abraham. Yeah. And then the, there is this, this, uh, this second or third or uh, doesn't matter the, the, the ratio of time. Uh, he, he mentions that this other Eliezer that now is the, the preceptor of Joseph uh, he speaks about him as the the, the, the first Eliezer, yes. and there is 
you know there is in this in this ancient time people would not uh, uh, attach so much to the personality as we we do in, in excellent excellent felipe excellent observation excellent but it it made uh, just it it was quite uh, impressive because you know i, I was thinking so uh, i specifically i was thinking about this uh, generations uh, from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you know, because in our heart and now in, in, in the readings, the, the uh, in the how can I say the, the the common sense is that Abraham is the father, physical father of Isaac, and Isaac is physical father of Jacob, Jacob, physical father of, of Joseph, and so on. But man, uh, Thomas Mann brings this concept that uh, not necessarily it is like this. You know, the, the, uh, Isaac could be uh, one person that lived, let's say, a uh, hundred years after Abraham. And that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this kind of thinking this kind of concept uh, blew my mind and I was thinking what do you think about this and if there is a correspondence in this kind of thinking in the sages and uh, in tradition at, in uh, tradition uh, in general thank you for your question yes also Weinre brings this uh, notion in, in into his book root of the bible as well and this is a yes it is well known concept in the writings in the hebrew writings yes this is true what you say yes there is this thought or this concept or this perception uh, has a root a deep root in the hebrew writings Yes, in the Hebrew sources, yes, yes. It's not a physical person. It's very good that you notice that it's not about the physical people or personalities. Like we tend to think in our times that people have profiles and this is personality and so. It's not about this. Like every Eliezer, even during the generations, because we have, so to speak, another Eliezer, the son of Moses and later we find Rabbi Eliezer, the Rabbi of Rabbi Akiva and so so all of those Eliezer are basically have you know in a way they don't have personalities they have only the letters in the absolute does it make any sense do you understand it as well yes Eti. it makes sense but uh, it's uh, quite um... How can I say it's quite, uh, it's new for me because, uh, because, um, you know, this, this, uh, we have this, this kind of stories. So, uh, how can I say we are, we are dealing with this, uh, with these stories, these biblical stories and, uh, we know that all of it it's for the sake of symbolic and spiritual uh, approach to the, the themes that's that's a common sense in my in my point of view but the fact that uh, this this uh, family tree could be uh, enlarged and could be uh, uh, disrupted and so uh, it's it's a kind of uh, it's a kind of stroke in my in my soul you know it's it's not bad at all but I, I am it's uh, something new and I was just uh, how can I say it it's it's kind of uh, uh, it's a it's a new new thing that I, will, I am uh, absorbing what is, in my heart. Yes, 
May I ask what is new to you in, in this concept? May I ask what is so yes, different yes. In, in this concept to you? Or new to accept or uh, new to meet that such a concept exists? What is new in this? It's new. It's like uh, it's a kind of hard to, to speak in English, but uh, it's uh, for instance uh, in the story of Isaac. Yes. He he is the son that was uh, uh, was uh, sacrificed. What were, were to were meant to, to be sacrificed, and uh, he had this this uh, huge uh, fear of God in the hands of his father, and and uh, in the in in the book of Thomas Mann, he says that uh, you know it could be in in, in another time. Uh, another Isaac yes. is the father of another Jacob. It's not the same uh, person, even if we think, and I, I, uh, I consider this all these characters uh, as a, a mythological characters. But, uh, but I all I always consider these uh, characters as one entity. One like one, you know, one one character. I didn't. I I never thought about this as uh, many characters that unite themselves just by the the letters, and the symbol the symbolical letters. So this this is new to me. You know, it's think that it isn't only one entity, but many entities that unite in one concept that is uh, a name this is kind of new to me yes yes i do understand if we could see this is very interesting because like if we see personalities we see many many uh, personalities yes so infinite personalities but if we look into the letters of the name, it, it's more a unify uh, or we can relate to the source. This is what, this is what uh, makes a change in your mind. This is how you perceive it. I'm, I'm trying to see what is your perspective about it. Yes, I, I guess that uh... Let me try to think about. Uh, I haven't. I I don't have actually a, a, a firm concept about it. It's just something new because I was reading yesterday and and then uh, it, he he makes this this appointment. Uh, this uh, he makes this this. This little, uh, he brings this concept in a, a very delicate uh, way, and, and uh, at first he speaks about this Eliezer. Yes. Just uh, uh, thinking, whoa, th this is this is interesting because he he deserved this Eliezer, this, he's, he's talking about uh, himself as the Eliezer, the past Eliezer. But then uh, Thomas Mann brings the, the, uh, the point of view of Jacob, seeing himself as Ben Mitzak. And But there <laughs> could be a, 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 a much older Isaac. I don't know it. I, I don't have a, 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 f a firm thinking about this, but just wanted to, to bring to, to, to the class. And 
uh, talk about because uh, it's it's kind of um, uh, something that how can I say it? <laughs> it's hard in English. It is, yeah. if I may just yeah. try to, to understand what Felipe is yeah. <laughs> saying yeah. and, and trying to make a, a question here. Mm. Just to, to, it's interesting what in this topic and uh, I heard and I, I read it here and there that we can like host these energies yeah. like like in Sukkah that mm -hmm. we host the seven prophets yeah. and the seven prophetizes you yeah. know so we could see life as Jacob yeah. and we could see life as Moses yes. and because it's not us we are receiving a guest yes if you could say something about this secret that we are not the owners of our thinking and we are not the owners of our perspective yes we only join some perspective yes so. and the sages also uh, find it in the later writing as ibu as you you remember the term ibu like yeah. conceivement yes, exactly. there's a wind not wind but a certain kind of thinking that moves through us in a certain time in certain um let's say junction in our life and a certain kind of thinking moves through us so we uh, we think and behave and feel according to what uh, the spirit brings to us and sometimes the sages uh, speak about different conceivements inside of us different iburim in certain uh, junction uh, this kind of uh, spirit like Moses or uh, 345 if you want to look at it in numbers or in the name sometimes uh, the spirit of Isaac sometimes the spirit when we feel that we are uh, there is a very interesting thing because there are circumstances which are so strong I don't know if people experience this each and every one uh, in his or her case there are uh, moments in life that we are approaching the altar like we are like little Isaac that are being front and we are binded by circumstances that we cannot do anything just letting ourselves be binded uh, by the ropes of time or the events there are there are moments like this that we cannot do anything do you understand what I'm saying and sometimes we feel that we were cheated so like Jacob and so by Laban and I would like to speak about this too about the name Laban also the changing condition what does it mean and so on and sometimes we need to move to a new country so there's a spirit that fills a heart uh, with a lot of ideas and hopes and uh, th this notion that we have inside the heart and the mind helps us to to drop or to live for a while what we have so to speak not accomplished but we have here people relates to it give it a lot of volume and we we it enables us to move and to do something what people used to go risk friendly do you understand what i'm saying It is not so much fixed like we think about patriarch there was Abraham and this is like take a, um, a sculpt uh, say sculpt there's a sculpture of Abraham and this is the format of Abraham and take another sculpture and this is Isaac and, and no it's just uh, like notions thoughts feelings that are moving through us so Abad Saddam even takes it and opened this topic in his writing very deeply. He says that every, every person, every, every person, every baby, 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 which is being born now, he starts, he or she starts with Bereshit. This is the first uh, word of the Bible. And this baby, boy or girl, will live all her life according to the letters of the Torah, the five books of Moses, 
until he or she will get to the, the last verse. Um, and the last word of the Bible is Israel, here, Israel. And the last letter is Lamed, yeah. And those, the last letter is Lamed. And we take the first, we take the last Lamed, the first bet, and we have Lev, heart. So each and every one of us is starting his life with bet of Bereshit. All what happens to us here, people, is according to the letters, to the notes which are written here. And each and every one of us will transform and will become from a bet, duality, to lamed, because the lamed is expression of the tetragrammaton or aleph. We start as dualistic creatures, good and bad, night and day, hot and cold, and we shall in a way closure our life in Aleph in unity. Is that clear? Because Bala Sulam takes it and opens it, this idea that Felipe read at Thomas, uh, Thomas Mann's uh, book, he develops it and he shows that every soul which comes and manifests through a body goes through this process of the five books of Moses. Moving from letter to letter, like a journey. Is that clear, this kind of a concept? Yes. It, 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 we don't have, of course, to agree. This is just another perspective that Bala Sulam Rabbi Yudaleb Ashlag opens. This is, he says, this is the journey of the soul. The soul is manifested through a baby. Baby is born. Even the word baby in English, baby, starts with a letter B. A, B. A is one, B is two. Baby starts with B. That, that's cool. This is a this is a very deep thinking. This is if we, if we want to look in, into it because it first of all it has to do with the names that like you say it's not personalities but it's name the name itself testify on a high reality in the stem or in the origin. This is one concept. Another concept is that what um, Fernando mentioning we are hosting or through us moving a lot of. Uh, impressions, thoughts, emotions that are connected to certain names or certain people, also sages. And there's also this concept. It depends of how much we want to open ourselves to, to those kinds of um, thoughts. But they do exist in the writings, in the Hebrew sources. They do exist. Felipe, they exist. But yeah. Yeah, but Thomas Mann and he has this. I never had never never seen such ability to to write with such a sensitive, highly human spirit about all those um, little transitions of the spirit. Let's say painters. He is he's an artist of writing. He he writes words. Uh, let's say painters. What unifies them that they can capture a movement in nature or in tree or emotion. A person who smiles or the the wind moves through his hair. So they manage to they have this hand that they can capture the movement of the spirit. This is a painter, and. What is so special about Thomas Mann's writings that he managed to put into words thin movement of the spirit inside of us that comes through uh, thought, speech, 
impressions from the nature and dialogues between people. It is, is I never seen such a never seen such a writing. Never. It it is whenever I read few sentences, I'm I'm I moved away from the book because it's it is so touching inside. He considered this book the best of Israel, the, the best uh, book that he has ever written. And uh, Fernando, he was born in the same day that uh, Carl Jung passed away. <laughs> it's very interesting. And different years, of course, but in the same day. It's very interesting. One aspect, it's interesting. Uh, I can remember in the, in the Torah, but when Jacob uh, is uh, he is uh, running from Esau, and he he gets uh, uh, close to the city of Luz, he he encounters this this the stone that he would uh, sleep and dream about the the, the stair. And uh, it's interesting because he he, he refers about the, uh, as a Gilgal, as it's a, it's a it's a, a circle made of stones, mm -hmm. and consider it as a sacred, the holy place. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's interesting because it, it it's round and it is named Gilgal. And as we learned, this Gilgal is related to the to the the circle and the circu circularity of human spirit and uh, and <laughs> he it's like as he entered in the like in a time machine, you know. Yes. Yes. It is very good what you offer because, in a way, Weinreb write about those concepts in a descriptive way, putting in mathematics, and and Thomas Mann writes his, all of those ideas in stories. It is beautifully how you describe it. Because what we do here, and also what uh, Friedrich Weinreb does to open the, the words, the letters with mathematics next to it, and when you read Thomas Mann, he managed to, to bring the mathematic uh, into lyrics. And you read words, and you have this impression inside of the heart that you don't need the mathematics. Yeah. This, is what, this is what's so wonderful about his writing. He managed to pull the spirit until it scored that it's almost mathematics, I would say. So pure, it is pure. He managed to describe Hebrew words more than any uh, uh, Hebrew speaker that I've met. And this is not his language even. Just one, one another question. I don't want to monopolize the session, yeah. but, but uh, what's what's about Ishtar? Ishtar, I yes. couldn't uh, understand well. Uh, it's, what? I, I was thinking that it's a star or it's it is the moon. I couldn't it is all the, there's a beautiful movement between all of those names because they move. <laughs> 
So we have Ishtar and Ashtoret and Star and Stern and yeah. that, there's a beautiful movement. There is a beautiful video in Portuguese about it. I saw yesterday, Fernando. Have you seen this? No, it. No, there's a beautiful, um, um, I will send you after the class, a beautiful um, video about the name. In Portuguese, a friend, a parallel friend, uh, I don't know her name, but uh, she has a channel in Portuguese and I saw her almost 50 minutes uh, video conversation. She made not a video, but a podcast conversation with letters and quotes and I will send it to you after this lesson that you will have this impression. Thank you. Thank Most you. welcome. And please ask questions, Fernando, Jill. I think that I saw also Karen here. Please feel free to ask questions. Fernando, Jill, would you like to ask something? Uh, if I may, I think. Yes. Yeah. About this topic, uh, um, I was listening very uh, attempt to what you and Philip were, was saying. And about Baal Hasulam that says that we we make like a Torah in our lives. Yes, we we are the we are the book, we are the book. Our life, like like uh, Jill wrote in Slack. Yes, we are the book. And we have to make a tikkun of some letters. It seems that we are uh, a work in progress. You know. Yes, uh, yes, uh, it's very good how you put <laughs> it. Very good, very good, Fernando. But sometimes it's difficult to me to understand how could we make this. It's like to look everybody with love and like, it's like thinking about what Hashem is, like it's uh, unconditional love to make to the others, to not be selfish or this is the ratification maybe to, to always be working for the benefit of the world, not only humans, but all the nature. If you could say something about this. It, it is very interesting about the perception of the letters because it's letters and signs and, and sometimes what happens through our life is that we, we meet or we come into contact with different people that most of them we don't know and never met, but there's like exchanging of impressions or sounds with them or uh, letters, letters like writing letters or one letter or one impressions. And th this is basically it. There's a beautiful um, reading of one of the, there's a once, uh, I would like to open this to, to manifest what you were saying. There is a description in the book of Genesis that Jacob has had enough from his father-in-law Laban after 20 years of cheating. And there is no need to count the cheating and the dialogue of, of, of this argument be, between them. And Jacob decides to, to leave and he runs from Laban. And and he is running him. Uh, he's running from him until the distance between them is uh, about three days. There is a description in the Bible in the book of Genesis that Jacob is running, fleeing from uh, his father-in-law Laban because there is no other way. He cannot say uh, goodbye, thank you. It will not go. Laban will keep him and will stretch him. So the only way is to just to flee. And this is what he does. And the Bible describes that the gap between them, because Jacob is running, 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 and the gap between them, the time difference between them is three days walking or running. And then the Bible describes that Laban is chasing, chasing after Jacob. And people are asking, why? Why does, because the Bible says, Vayugad le Lavan, and it was told to Laban, Vayugad 
ללבן, somebody comes and tell לבן that Jacob moved or flee with his families and so, and the Bible says ויוגד ללבן, and it was told to לבן, and לבן start chasing after Jacob, and one of the, I think one of the Magid, Magid, I think Magid me Mezerich, the Magid from Mezerich, translate or understand this, uh, how do you say, phrase as Laban was chasing after Jacob to give him letters. This is how the Magid from Mezerich explained the fact that Laban was chasing after Jacob. And what letters? He says, Vayugad, and it was told to Laban, Vayugad, when Yod and Gimel is basically 13, and Vav and Daled is 10, meaning love, 13 is love, love in 10 spheres. Why do, do you understand what I'm trying to say? It's not me, it's the Magid from Mezerich. Sometimes even there's like, like this is a conflict. Jacob wants to flee after 20 years of cheating. He wants to live in peace, but he can't because Laban cannot, will not, never let him go in peace. So he has to flee. And there's a distance between them of three days or 72 hours. 72 is also an expression of wisdom and grace. And if you change 27 is again, 72 hours or 27 and 27 again is light. And so depends on how we look at it. And why does Laban suddenly find it so, uh, how do you say, emergence in emergence to, to chase after Jacob, to give him the letters, to give him the signs. What letters? Here we see, Vayugad, Vayugad Lelevan, from, from Gad, Gad, Gid, or Magid. This is a very, what I'm trying to tell you is that sometimes the letters that or the exchanging of letters is not all the time through a uh, speech of, so to speak, love and fraternity. There was a conflict, or so to speak, or disagreement for many years, and, and there is also in this unresolved issue, he, he still look for him to give him those letters. He's chasing after him to give him the letters. Yes. If I understood well, is that what happens to us in our daily lives, even the problems or the conflicts, it's a way to deliver letters to us, to deliver yes. the story. Yes. story. Yes. This is beautiful. I can bring this verse that you will be able to see uh, this verse. One second. And it brings me also to a speech that I would like to speak one second. Also to Helen of Troy, because it's the same thing. Uh, Genesis 31, 22. Genesis, one second. Genesis 31. What did I say, 32? One second. One second. I'm trying to look for the, for, for the right verse that you will be able to see the letters. And I would like to bring them, you know, if not in English, I'll bring it with Hebrew here. 
This is Genesis 31, 22. Here it's moving on the board. Here, you see? Genesis 31, do you see the Hebrew verse in the center of the whiteboard? Yes, I see. Vayugad lelevan, here. And Laban was told, Vayugad, here we see the four letters, Vayugad lelevan, Bayom Ashlishi ki Barach Yaakov because uh, Jacob was fleeing. And I would like to bring this verse as well for Jill. So, one second, Jill. I will also find it in English and you could see the parallel movement. Second. Here. It's moving here. I'll try to center this. Jill, do you see the verse? Yes. Yes. And the, the key word here, this is how the sages look at it. They look into every word, every word, and they try to understand what every word tried to tell us here by your God. Here we, we see. Vav and second, I'll make a new color here. Vayugad, this is the six. And here we have Yod and Gimel. Yod and Gimel is 13. And here we have Dalet and four. So we have what? We have love. 13 is love in 10 spheres. And it was told to Laban in the third day that Jacob was running. So the Magid from Ezerich says why Laban was chasing after Jacob to give him the letters. What letters? Letters of love. That's so beautiful because this these three days, as you mentioned, these seventy two hours, seventy two is chesed. So mm -hmm. uh, it's like love is it's it's kind of uh, it's not uh, so so quickly. Uh, saw in the, the, the in our deeds, love takes time. It's it's not a, a, this this linear uh, this frontal experience. It is uh, it's interesting this aspect of the three days. We have to wait the the number of the spirit, which is the three, the number three. Uh, we have to it it you know the the distance between Laban and Jacob is three. It's a it's a respect yeah. distance. I mean, I guess Laban could chase Jacob even in the first day, but it was. It, it didn't occur like this. <clears throat> it's interesting <clears throat> that love burn stands for Hochma. Yes, yes, yes. In three days we have Bina, Hezed, and Gebura. And then we have Jacob that is Tiferet. And so the distance between the both is three spheres. Yes, it's true. And there's another thing which I wanted to speak with you because it also rose yesterday briefly. You said yesterday that Laban, Laban is always, he's changing the conditions. 
This is how he managed to cheat Jacob all the time. He's switching the conditions all the time. There's no firm ground because what happens is in agreement, we have a firm ground and then, but he changes. And I saw this, uh, this expression of changing in the mathematical of Bala Sulam. He was saying that Laban is 82. Here we have 30. Here we have two and here we have 50 so it's 82 but the expression of the name Laban in the letters is like Yod and Ya and no Yod Yod Ya let, let me check it check it with you because in a way Bala Sulam was saying that even the way we write Laban in the letters of the tetragrammaton is changing, is not um, constant like any other thing. This is also changes. So the name itself is changing all the time. It's not that he is deliberately, do you understand what I'm trying to say? It's his nature. This is his nature of the, yes, this is his nature. Let me let me see if I'm um, looking at it. One second, one second. I would like to write because this is uh, the. It's not that he deliberately uh, changes, but this is the nature of Laban. That even his name, he's not uh, uh, Yod Ya Yahu and Havaya. Yod Ya Yahu and I'll write it again. Yod Ya Yahu and Havaya. Yod, ya, yahu, yahu and Havaya. Yes. This is also ch something which is, we never seen such a composition. Because usually when we write the letters of the tetragrammaton, there is, is an order. We have the four simple letters and then we have the filling of them with the letter He or the letter Yod or letter Aleph, but such a composition which all the time changes. This is interesting. I very find interesting. It. Very interesting. Thank you for sharing. You're welcome. What is more interesting that if you double this in four, the 82 in four, in the four daughters, because he gave Laban, gave Jacob his four daughters, two from his wife, Rachel and Leah, and two others from his maid. So if you double... Um, 82 by 4, you get the value of darkness in Hebrew, Hoshif, if I remember well. But basically, the opposite or the other side of the darkness is the letters of the name Laban. In other words, what we experience sometimes as deep darkness is basically on the other end, a lot of light, but only with a distance, we can see this. This is the culto, right? Yes, yes, yes. Culto? Culto, the culto, all the best, like we... Uh, Yes, what we, uh, how do you say, wish to each other, all the best, called Tuv. What is called, called Tuv? The sphere of Yesod. A Yesod is named Kol. 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 This is the name of Sfirat Yesod. It means all. Because Yesod has the ability, what, to influence all the abandons to the sphere of Malchut. So I saw Nikra called to because he stores the all goodness. Yes. Called to. So here we have the six, and this is Malchut. And I saw Nikra called to. He holds the, the whole goodness of the rest of the sphere and he will give it to the heavenly kingdom. Called to. It, it, this could be a mindset, um, you know, because 
when things happen, like you said, and, and we think that everything is for for this ratification, like to, to have this cultov in our mind, right. that we don't know what don't is know better. What... Yeah. So I don't know. If, if, it's if only my... through time. It might take sometimes many years that... Uh, because our perspective is the uh, one hour perspective did did I get a like or response or you know our lens is very short our lens is very short but in the long run things they have a distance of decades and sometimes hundreds of years perspective what we are not able to capture In a way, we are walking, we are all walking in the dark because we cannot see beyond the hour, beyond the day, beyond the week, beyond months or seasons. We just can't. And it's good because in a way we can choose what to do or what in what to believe and what to, to follow. It's very interesting conversation. It was amazing, really. It's so good to hear you and to participate of it. So I thank you so much. Thank you, friends. Thank you so much. And I'm very glad that uh, Felipe, you brought his question. Because those questions, in a way, they let us rest. Because I, I would like to also bring from Etty's perspective, because if there are no questions, so I start running with the verses and pictures, and it's sometimes very fast. Because it's like mathematics and letters just roll, and it's good that you bring questions. It is good. It is much good because it's like you you come from where you are. Otherwise, I just feel that I'm just uh, moving and and like a spirit on the water, and I just. You know, so it's very good that you bring questions. Very, very good. Thank you so much, Eti. Thank you so for much. Your, your kindness and your, your knowledge and for us to having this opportunity to speak and to converse. It's uh, even, even though when we are not able to connect properly, as you know, there is daily daily situations and so on mm -hmm. but sometimes uh, we can be concentrated then the spirit hovers and find place to dwell in our conversation so I thank you so much and all of you my friends for the opportunity to to raise the spirit in these conversations thank you so much I just wanted to say um, yes. thank you too um, because I had some questions, but just listening to um, everything that you all were talking about, um, I got answers to them, so I'm appreciative. Thank you. Thank you so much, Gia. Thank you so much for participating in those sessions. They're very dear, dear, dear. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Jill. Thank you all. And I, I will send you this uh, video in Portuguese about Ishtar and the names that a friend did, which I discovered. Uh, thank you. Thanks for your <laughs> last conversation or podcast. It, just yes. if I may, just to share it, this, yes. uh, this friend that I, I don't know has this podcast. Yes. Enter in our channel and, and wrote that, uh, like, Hello, friends. Uh, you know, we are talking about the same things and we don't know each other. And, and I enter in, in her channel and, and we meet like videos about the same topics in, in, in almost the same time, you know, like it is, it is strange, you know, but I but saw this. <laughs> But it was a nice conversation. Uh, I, I invited her to come to Twitter. I hope that 
someday she she could join us. Thank you so much because yesterday I had the same impression. It's I asked myself how can it be that in the same time that you were uh, podcasting, she also was podcast. She was also making podcasts and with slides and letters at the same time on the same topics and you did not know each other the, when i saw this yesterday i saw there is a higher hand in all of this game a higher hand i was so overwhelmed yesterday that i really pulled back you know me too it, it, it <laughs> is su such thing no person can uh, uh, create you know this is Yes. Yes, it blew my mind, blew my mind as well because I couldn't believe, you know, when I saw it. Yes. It was like, what is happening? Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And I would like to wish you all a very beautiful, wonderful week. And we can meet here tomorrow. And please bring questions. If you have, store them. Jill, if you have, store the question and ask them. And we shall answer them one by one. Okay, thank you. Goodbye. Thank everybody. you so much. Thank you. Goodbye. Shalom, shalom. Happy Hanukkah. Shalom, shalom. Thank you so much.